My name is Sarajem Kusak and my today's talk is about introduction to Wolfram Mathematica for teachers. It's about uh, new lessons we created at our faculty, Faculty of uh, Mathematics and Physics at uh, Charles University, which is university in Prague. First, maybe briefly importance of introduction in general, but uh, for you to have some bigger aspects of me, so I am not very much as expert as uh, Paul Abbott or the other people which use Mathematica for more than 15 or 20 years in teachings. I'm just a young PhD student, but I use Mathematica for more than five years. I make about uh, two introductions, one as part of my diploma thesis. It was based about Mathematica, Maple, Maxima and Metcat, so generally about the computer algebra systems. And uh, now I have created this lessons about lesson about Mathematica for teachers in short. Uh, in the beginning I would like to speak about the importance of interaction in general. So I think uh, during the, my research I work, so I read some articles about computer algebra systems and its integration. It's a really complicated stories. One of the factors is the teacher's factor. I will talk about it later on. But uh, I think the really important part is to do the introduction by yourself. Because you can use really great books like Essential Mathematica or use Mathematica documentation, but you never go deep inside what is going on. Or sometimes there are some tricks hidden behind that if you, for example, use eliminate command. So if you don't eliminate all the variables, so output in between is really horrible. Yeah, so you have to know some tricks how to work with it. So for me, it was really nice to do my own introduction and work on. Uh, for a content, uh, context, it's really good to uh, look inside as a concept of in independent lecture. You can also think of Mathematica as part of the current lecture, like theoretical mechanics, classical electrodynamics, but then you have to talk about the methods and the other stuff. It's not today's part of my topic. So. In the first approximation, you can talk about uh, Mathematica as a part of computer algebra system course. In field of, you have physics, mathematics, if you have bigger faculties, so you can talk about economics, and you add some general course about uh, how to use Mathematica in those topics. Yeah, or you can talk about, uh, if you have Mathematica, so you can apply it into the physics, and you have, for example, ma ma mechanics, theoretical physics, classical electrodynamics, quantum theory, and you add the course in such way that uh, the student can see the applications in such lessons. You can also specify it, it's, sorry, it's not very good to see, but you can also divide it into the different lessons that you can apply the Mathematica only in the mechanics or in the, into the theoretical physics or into the classical electrodynamics. But really important part is what are you focused on. If you are creating the introduction, so you can talk about uh, using the Mathematica. So you're just working for the commands, teach of pure functions and other stuff. Or you can use Mathematica, which I think generally the teachers do use Mathematica with some examples, with, for example, in field of physics or example of economy and different fields. But if you want to use Mathematica in physics and create a seminar about Mathematica in physics, so there are two different topics. And you can use Mathematica in physics or you can do physics by Mathematica. It's really important to remember there are really two different kinds of work you are doing. I make a mistake to do physics by Mathematica. It's not a good, a good idea. <laughs> and I told you why. Because our, this is the really two different approach. Uh, if you use Mathematica in physics, so you know the Mathematica commands like plot, solve, reduce, and the other ones, and you try to use those commands inside the field of the physics. So the difficulty is given 
by Mathematica and its possibilities. So you go by Mathematica and okay, I know this is the plot, I can use the uh, parametric plot for visualizing the motion and the other commands. But if you try it by other way, that you take a physics lecture, open the textbooks, and okay, here's the physics task, and I try to solve it. So now we have to solve the task one by one. And uh, what is really an issue that the task you are trying to solve are different on the different level in the point of view of Mathematica. Task, one task can be really easy. For example, you just use solve for a Newton's law that F is equal mass time acceleration and solve the mass. But if you, sorry, if you try to solve maybe the other task to solve it as a differential equations, so now there are some assumptions in the physics hidden inside. If you try to solve it by paper and pencil method, you usually don't see it. Because you know that mass is non zero, it's a real value. But if you try to do it in Mathematica, so you have to think about that Mathematica work in the complex numbers. Yeah, so there should be some issues, and it's emerged if you use uh, Newton's law in more complex tasks, that you have to use these assumptions. So now you have to realize that uh, the difficulty of the task can be different. Yeah, so, so it's really a better idea to use Mathematica in physics instead of physics in Mathematica. Okay, here comes the three different points of view which we came across uh, during the preparing the introduction. Uh, first concept was to create an introduction for physics. Unfortunately, during the conference of the relativity in Prague this year, it was a really big conference, so we doesn't have opportunity to create it, but uh, what they have done was introduction to Mathematica for teachers, at least. So there are three different approaches you can use. First of them, really scientists or researcher, which generally is focused on the formulas and equation as a language he can talk and describe the nature and work with. Uh, in the point of uh, what he is doing, so if we try to visualize something by plots, so generally he uses the visualization for himself. Instead of the teacher, we have to think about, okay, so I can make the plot, but important part, I want to show you something, so I have to think about the thickness of the lines, I have to think about the axis, if it's readable, if I use manipulate, so the, maybe the screen is big, big enough for you to understand, and the other aspects. And uh, what is the third very important aspect for a scientist? Usually he uses some commands on the functions which are useful only for him. For example, the zeta function, delta function, which in case of the teacher or key 12 teacher, okay, who of the key 12 teacher have ever heard of the heaviside functions or some gamma functions or, or the special case distributions? Yeah, so there, there is really issue that uh, the requirements by scientists what to do in the introduction are really different in the point of view of the teacher. Okay, now for a teacher. So I am kind of the teacher at the high school, now also at the university, so what I will think. So I have to think about the commands which is useful not only for, the, for me, but generally for the, some kind of scientist or some beginner stuff for the scientists to know, for example, the plot, solve, desolve and desolve, but also have to think about a point of view of the students, which sometimes, this is the third part, but I will talk later on, is really different requirements for the students, because for if you get a really well-known scientist or researcher, and point of view of the student, so it's like somebody who is looking up and okay, there is some line, there is somebody doing the research and I'm just here and I'm glad to do Newton's law. Eh, what is the Hamiltonian principle, or Lagrangian principle, is or mystery for me. <laughs> and uh, so, in the, I talked about it late, a uh, few minutes ago, that uh, teacher tried to, for example, if, visual, if, you, if he tried to visualize something, so he think about how, how can I make it understandable for the others. Really good what happened in the Mathematica 9 is a plot legend. I was really pleased because to show the students what I am plotting was really difficult. 
Okay, and really important part, I will show it also in the syllabus of the new lesson. It's about thinking on the old fashioned way and new fashioned way. This is the issue if it's somebody teach, for example, for 30 years. So show them to think about point of view of the manipulate. Or, okay, you have a free form. Or you have Wolfram Alpha queries in the Mathematica. So it's like, oh, I don't care about it because I, I like to programming. I'm really good at it. Yeah, so sometimes uh, it's good to try to think in a new way or new possibilities. It's sometimes, uh, it's uh, similar to Wolfram. Stephen Wolfram was talking about that you reach some level and you have to look around what can I do and use it in, a, in the appropriate level of the task I can solve. And uh, the third part, if you are doing the introduction as a student's factor. I think generally if some teachers do the introduction, so mainly mainstream, if you try to do new, new lessons, was only in the, with respect what the teacher thinks is useful or talk with the colleagues, okay, so what do you need to be done? But uh, I also this, uh, do some questionnaire in the theoretical mechanics and we talk about the students, what can be useful for them. And also there were some different researches that uh, it proves for the students to be useful or any usage of anything that it's useful during their studies. So if they, if they can use Mathematica, for example, to solving their task, it's really useful for them. And they consider Mathematica is useful and they have motivation to learn it. Uh, and the first approach, yes, they, it's for them to pass the test. Also, they can use for cheating if they have mobile phones. You can evolve from alpha queries and solve the tasks. But uh, also in the positive way, they can check the solution. Or at the high school, you can use the students and somebody who can find you a knowledge. What is the distance to the Mars? What is the radius of the sun? And that's, it's not about that uh, the teacher is the bearer of the knowledge. It's maybe uh, like a coach or advisor. Okay, we can talk about this topic and what can, what can you find? What can we talk about? And uh, other point which is really useful, it's uh, that uh, students can see the problem for himself. He can use the plots, he can use the Wolfram Alpha, and he can see what he is solving. Okay, uh, really important factor if you are speaking of anything in education, and I think a really good article about it was written by Hennessy. It's uh, really the teacher's factor. And uh, mainstream is the attitude to Mathematica, or generally of anything you do, it's about if you arrive in here and told you, okay, Mathematica should be useful, but don't think about, about it. It's too difficult to learn. And if you arrive with this attitude to the classroom, so students will be really demotivated. So it's better to think, okay, we have some advanced stuff. We can do really advanced physics. Even if you don't understand the desolve or differential equations, you can solve some tasks which can be useful. At, at high school level, yeah, at university, usually it's a different story. Also, it's question about to be open-minded. Oh, I can en enlarge it. Also important is uh, to be open-minded for technology that is usage. If you don't permit it just because you are scared that your students will teach, uh, will cheat, so there is something wrong. And uh, also some issue can be that uh, some teachers don't really get what I can do with Mathematica and don't understand the concepts. Because if you try to program with Mathematica, and it happened for me after the three years of programming, then I arrived to the pure functions and I have to throw away the last three years and start again. Because the concept of the pure function, nest, list, map, it's really breakthrough in Mathematica. And unless you try it, you really don't know what is Mathematica about and its possibilities. Also important, I don't know, it's only happening maybe in my country, but uh, for all the teachers, it's really an issue to admit, I don't know. If, if student solves, solves some problem for himself and he hands up and, hey, what is the Bessel function? I found it as a solution with harmonic oscillator. What is it? And if the teachers haven't had some advanced course in university, so he don't know, okay, it's a spherical function, you have some properties, and it's usually the solution if you have harmonic oscillator. Yeah, so there should be problem that the teacher have to admit, sorry, I don't know, but we can look for it, we can check it and talk about it. 
Also with it uh, comes the problem sometimes that the students can know more than teacher. And for some of my colleagues happen that uh, rather than to show them the Mathematica, it's to not tell them it's possible to be done because they will be more clever than they are. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's some issues, maybe it's common in your countries too, but in, in which not all teachers are, are this way. Yeah? We have really great teachers also at the world class level, I really admit, but uh, some of them have these issues. <laughs> And sometimes what they do, it's sometimes useful to hide some knowledge. For example, if you talk about the Newton's law, so I can't tell them, okay, it's a differential equation, and you have to add the sum of the forces, and then you get the acceleration. But if you are teaching the Newton's law for the first time at high school, so it's like, okay, here is the formula, and we can try some slow motion, and if you press something, yeah, so it's moving, and the, f the acceleration is given, by the force I am acting on. Yeah, so this is the basics and some advanced level is hidden later on. Oh, four minutes, sorry. So briefly about our introduction to Wolfram Mathematica. I talk a little bit too much. Uh, so in our faculty we have a multi-license for Mathematica for students and also for the staff. So we can use it as much as we like. I will enlarge it. Uh, what I've shown also in the questionnaire that students are interested in Mathematica. Uh, it proves that we have Mathematica for beginners and also advanced courses in Mathematica for generally in mathematicians. And all the seminars are really full. Yeah, so there's issue there is more students interested in than it's possible to teach. But the uh, common problem is that students don't know how to start with Mathematica. So they really need something like introduction. There is also Wolfram videos and other stuff. But first step is better to teach them and get them some credits with it. Yeah, what well, is a little bit of issue that uh, Mathematica is not part of the obligatory courses. So it's OK, you should go there if you are interested in. And uh, in my case, uh, there is missing something like Mathematica for physicist or Mathematica for physics teacher. Okay, basic information. So we try about to teach stu uh, students of the teachers programs to show them that we have Mathematica and we can use for it. So we created these lessons. Here is the links. Uh, I think the presentation will be available at the end of the conference, so you can dun then download it and look for it. Unfortunately, the materials are in uh, Czech. And uh, here is the syllabus. So if you know a little bit of Mathematica, so generally it follows the possibilities of Mathematica rather than the requirements of the physics. But what I want to really talk about, it's uh, different in traditional and modern topics. If you have traditional topics, so sometimes they are older, more than 400 years. Uh, at, at, this is really about thinking the old way and new fashion way. Because if you think the old way, okay, so I can solve the equation. Okay, I can solve the integral. Uh, it was able, it, Newton was able to do it. Yeah, so maybe we should do something more. So in here we can use uh, command manipulate, for example. It's something a little bit new. Also you can talk about uh, CUDA programming. I think Newton doesn't have a computer, neither the GPUs. And uh, you can talk also with Wolfram Alpha or talk with the interactive table and how to use it for the teachers. Maybe in the, for, for future there will be tablets or Mathematica Online or you can use uh, windows on the tablets. So you can use also with tablets and touch screens. And it's also useful to have some, uh, some point that you can see a different programs like system model or, or some alternatives to not be only stuck with Mathematica, but also see worldwide what you can do with those computer algebra systems or generally with all programs. And sometimes maybe you realize that Mathematica can be really useful if you think about it. <laughs> okay, this is our first year. I think it was a really good idea we use at uh, our faculty, generally at uh, Department of uh, Physics Education, that before we start some lessons, we make something like unofficial first year. That there is no credits, usually the students come inside with no credits and uh, we just try the seminar if it's work. 
Uh, so we tried something unofficial. There was some PhD students and also one of the professors join in and I teach about Mathematica. General idea was about to spend only one and a half hour about talking about Mathematica. In one time it happened that we end up at uh, after three or maybe four hours after discussing with maybe the plotting. Okay, and now something about the future steps. So during also my PhD, so I was thinking about how to work with uh, Mathematica and how to incorporate it into the curriculum. So you can start with basic lecture. In our case, it's Mathematica for teachers. Unfortunately, we don't have enough teachers to also create some advanced level. So what we are willing to do for future years is talk about the Mathematica for physicists. And then you can follow in the next level or maybe next year that you go for Mathematica for physicists that you have uh, still the basics you are building in. And you have Mathematica for physicists too, which means, okay, so now we need to talk about the numerics. We need to talk more about some advanced method in physics. We can talk about the uh, quantum theories and the application of Mathematica. And later on, you can also use Mathematica, for example, in theoretical mechanics, at least on the CDF level. Or you can use solve the whole task, like Lagrangian equation by Mathematica. Also in the uh, classical electrodynamics, and maybe in the final level, you can use Mathematica project, which can be focused on the thesis or bachelor thesis and so on. Okay, so I think my time is up. So this is some of acknowledgements, grants I get, but I think it's not really important for you. And I like to thank you for attending my talk. <laughs>